Mr. Kyle, you were instructed to compensate during the ion storm. But well, I tried, Mr. Spock, I tried. Carelessness with the equipment cannot be tolerated. But, Mr. Spock, Your I tried. Your agonizer. No, Mr. Spock. Your agonizer, please. No, Mr. Spock. I tried. I really tried. Here is the ultrasonic anti-bark device using one of those chemo audio generators. Um, this one here, I got an audio, I got some audio delay board in there. That switch is a bypass. I can switch the audio delay board. Because how those generators work when you first power them up, even if they're in the ultrasonic range above the human hearing range, they still are audible as they ramp up into that higher range. So I didn't want that. I want the thing to be quiet so nobody knows it's on when I turn it on. Uh, we're calling this the agonizer. So looking inside. So originally I was going to start with two, two of the little camo signal generators and run it into each port on that amplifier. But that didn't work out. I was getting all kinds of audio artifacts, just strange noises. It was like, <clears throat> I, anyway, it's hard to explain what I was doing, but it, it wasn't going to work right. And even when I had originally planned to run two power supplies in this box here, one to power the amplifier, it wanted to power the signal generator. It was just little, little cheap switching power supplies I got off Amazon. In fact, I got all this stuff off Amazon. Um, all kinds of noise on that thing. So what I ended up doing is running the amplifier on this big power supply down there. It's only drawn like, I got it set right now about 80 watts. It's only drawn about seven or eight watts, seven or eight amps. And then the battery to control or run the, uh, the camo generator and the RF remote stuff. So I mean, it'll run, run that thing for a month with that battery there, I just charge it periodically. So kind of the rundown of the thing is chemo, the chemo signal, ge signal generators, audio generators, I got two, but I'm only using one right now. The uh, RF remote, the keychain remote to turn it on and off. A dual port voltage divider. I originally built a, a two port because I was intending on running two of these generators into that amplifier, but it didn't work. All, all kinds of strange noises, so you need to have a you need to knock the voltage down because those little camos put out about 10 volts of AC audio. And the uh, this is a low level input amplifier. I think the most is like six volts. So that little voltage bridge right there I got knocks it down to about one volt. And then from there I can use the uh, this level control to set the audio level. I set the output, volt, output uh, uh, wattage on that thing. So this is the, uh, this is the delay, delay circuit. And basically what that does, it doesn't engage the speakers for about two seconds, give the uh, ultrasonic generator a chance to ramp up into the, uh, out of the hearing range so you don't hear it, and then it comes on. And of course, the pile amplifier, I got it set for about, about 10 watts, or I'm sorry, about 80 watts on the thing. And I'm running in bridge mode. So and basically what it is in bridge mode, I'm using both sides of the amplifier, both output, output ports of the amplifier in a mono configuration with just a single input. And between both of those, I get 80 watts worth of output, just figuring out the voltage output uh, squared divided by your ohms times two, since I'm running in a bridge mode. Um, but anyway, when you turn the thing on, let me see if I get my remote here. So when you turn the thing on, let me, let me just take it out of, okay, now the, that little audio bypass is turned off. So now you'll hear it when it powers up. And that is super loud. I'm in the garage with the doors closed and this thing's probably 30 feet away. The speaker pointed away from me. <clears throat> and then if I turn the audio delay on, so then I turn it on, now it's generating. You don't even hear it, it doesn't even, you can't even tell it turned on, but it's generating in the ultrasonic range. <clears throat> with the, uh, the tweeters I'm using, some pile tweeters, the crazy audio out of those things. The little piezos don't generate enough output, even running through the amplifier. In fact, the amplifier doesn't even have any draw with those things. Uh, but using one of the uh, pile amp, I'll, I'll put a picture of the tweeter I'm using. Um, it's crazy power. It's like a hundred, the rating on it's like 106 dB at one foot with one watt. So with this thing, with 80 watts, it's, it's insane. When I have the thing in the audio range, I put a little app on my iPhone and I sing 100 dB of audio uh, 18 feet away. So it's it's incredibly loud. Anyway, this is the uh, 
the big agonizer. And I'll show some pictures of the speakers here in a little bit. All the stuff we just got off Amazon. I also have a little version. I'll show that too. That uh, the, the barking guys, barking dogs are much closer, about eight, 10 feet away at the closest point and 25 at the furthest. So I just do that the little unit by itself. But uh, this is the, uh, the agonizer. Here's the little agonizer. This is the one I don't need an amplifier for because I'm so close to the dogs. But I got uh, the generator unit, RF remote, audio delay board. And then the uh, switch right here is an audio delay bypass. Right now, if I turn on the, the little agonizer, See, you don't hear doing nothing. Cause, let me turn off the delay now. There it goes. The little agonizer. Okay, here's another option for an ultrasonic generator. I'm using one of these function arbitrary waveform generators. I got this one off Amazon. They're about $250. It goes up to, this one goes to 10 megahertz. But you can uh, go ahead and set the frequency on the thing. Change the thing up. It seems like from what I read online, most of these anti-professional, anti-bark devices seem to be right around 25 kilohertz. So I'm kind of thinking that somewhere in that area is probably the optimal frequency. So those little camos will certainly get there, but they, uh, they kind of oscillate. They go back and forth. I'll show it on my scope here one of the later videos in this thing. But uh, anyway, this one's just kind of an experiment. It seems to work as well as the other thing. Just a little more control over it, frequency-wise. I got it plugged into the pile amplifier. Another pile amplifier I have here. Little uh, time delay relay. You can set the uh, delay when that thing comes on anywhere between zero and 10 seconds. And the uh, RF remote, that little black box. It's all just Velcro to the top here just to experiment around. I got it on the keychain, and then turn it on. So it's generating now, and that's just my AC voltmeter, monitoring the AC volts out. So I know about how many watts I'm putting out, so just that 12.76 times 12.76, I know there's 12.76 squared, divide your ohms on your speaker, which is four. So I'm probably about 30, 35, 36 watts right there. It's not super high power. Um, if you're going to run one of these things, just a couple things to be aware of, especially if you're just plugging into a tweeter. When you first power them up, they power up at a thousand or one kilohertz. So that's way below what a typical tweeter is. A normal tweeter range probably starts at about 3,000 kilohertz and up. So you better be careful you don't damage the uh, tweeter by trying to pump a, a low uh, a low frequency signal into the thing. The other thing is the uh, make sure you don't overpower the amplifier. This, yeah, like I said it defaults at four volts peak to peak. You can change that, but you can also damage the amplifier if you've got the uh, gain set too low on the amplifier because it ranges like 0.8 volts to six. So anyway, just something to be aware of. I haven't had any problems, but uh, I think there's a memory on this thing. I haven't really played too much with it. This is just kind of an experiment. If I end up uh, keeping this thing in this configuration, I'll take those components over there and just put them in a... Uh, a regular box and just mount it to the amp but uh anyway another uh alternate so, uh, choice if you're putting together an ultrasonic generator and i didn't make i didn't uh design any of this stuff a lot of these are just videos i've seen offline and just kind of ad-libbed on other people's work so anyway just kind of sharing my uh my little construction techniques and what i've done over here and i've actually been very effective the barking over here is down probably easily 80%, but anyway. Okay, here's the audio generator. My service monitor, this is in the completely the lowest audible range. And it's, yeah, I see peaks up over 12 volts on the thing. But then as I start to run the, the generator up frequency-wise, the power starts to roll off. Of course, the monitor is not gonna, it's, it's running out, of the, it's moving out of the, uh, Human hearing, human hearing range now. That's the setting I've been using for the dogs. So I'm at that setting, still getting a, uh, a decent amount of output voltage. I see it peaking up eight, nine volts. 
so should be plenty to drive an amplifier. Here's the little pile of tweeters. I'm using super tweeters. So these actually have a great frequency response. They go up to uh, 25 kilohertz. So when you're looking for speakers to run on these things, if this is what you're building an ultrasonic thing, you need to check the uh, frequency response because most of them seem to go up to about 20 kilohertz. Some go to 22. Cut some of the piles, a couple of the piles go to 25. Uh, there was another pile I had that was a 250 watt rated one, but I smoked two of those. But it's relatively cheap. I think I paid for this one. It's like maybe thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars. Um, and but it's super loud even on the without the amplifier, just on the little chemo itself. Because you look at the sensitivity rating. If you see a sensitivity rating on the speakers, basically what that says is where so it means where it's a sensitivity 106 dB. That rating is one watt of input at three feet will put out, produce 106 dB of sound. So that's uh, that's a pretty loud speaker right there. But anyway, there's what I'm using right now. I've had pretty good luck with the little piezo speakers I've used, like some of these guys here. They're fine if you're in close, but if you're, I got this whole point of the amplifier, I got a critter that's probably out about 75 plus feet. So I need something to throw more power. And even running the amplifier in these things, they just, the amplifier doesn't put any real power through these things. They're great things. They go, I think, up to like 30 kilohertz, so they well within the frequency range, which you want to be, but they just don't put out much power. But if you're in close, 20, 25 feet, I think if one of those would actually work pretty good. There's like a horn one I tried, but these are piezos, and they don't, they don't, they don't work the same as a uh, regular dynamic tweeter. Okay, when I started playing with this ultrasonic project, I was going to use a couple of these 40-watt audio amplifiers, <clears throat> but I quickly found that they didn't... Uh, they didn't perform once you got out of the uh, beyond 20 kilohertz, which is the upper end of the human hearing range. As soon as you got in the ultrasonic range, the power went down to nothing. I was actually getting no power out of those things. Worked perfect, you know, 20 kilohertz and below, but uh, that won't work for an ultrasonic project. This amp here, all the stuff on top was my prototype where I put it all into a box, but this pile actually works pretty good. If you look up the specs on one of these things, uh, they go up to 30 kilohertz. So well within the range you want. And like I said, this, this says 1400 watts. I, there's no way that amplifier puts out 1400 watts. I'd imagine they probably put out maybe a couple hundred watts per channel. The way I got mine set right now with the drive turned down, I got 80 watts out of one channel, so, or 80 watts out of the bridge channel, which is more than enough. But uh, anyway, if you're looking at adding an amplifier to your ultrasonic project, double check the specs on it, make sure it goes beyond 20 kilohertz. Otherwise, it's, you're going to end up finding out what I found out when I first started playing with these little guys. You just end up getting no power output.